Beyond the Buckles, real rodeo topics for cowboys and cowgirls. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Young Cattle Company. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Buckles. I'm here with with the gang. We're short Nathan. Nathan had to go run to an error or something, but we got Blake Skaggs, Briar, and Blaine Hart. Uh, it's going to be a great episode, and I've been looking forward to this one. I mean, big time. I have wanted to do this, and Bad Company was a big deal in, in my younger days. And uh, this guy sitting next to me is is, is a renowned bullfighter. Uh, Should have got a lot more uh, credit than, than what he has in the past. Um, Mark Callahan, Bad Company Rodeo. Man, I am super excited and stoked to see you here today. Hey, Miss, good yeah. to see you guys again. Your boys are growing up all nice and handsome. <laughs> looks like you're doing good. You know. Well, we can compliment my wife on that one. There yeah, it, it didn't come from <laughs> no, him. It I didn't did not, no, it did no. <laughs> He got something to do with it. But anyway, yeah, appreciate yeah. you having me, man. You bet, man. And I and I know the story, but I want you to tell the listeners and the fans out there kind of how you got started. And, and let's get there. When, when did you start? Why did you start fighting bulls? Because I remember Plum back at Jigs Hideaway. Man, that goes way back there. I was too lazy to work and too scared to steal. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes me bullfighting was a heck did you, of a Did you try riding bulls at some yeah. time? Well, what happened was our senior year in high school, we were raising money for the senior class, mm-hmm. and we, we built a bucking burrow between these three trees, a few of my buddies. Uh-huh. So we I've, been on, I've, we, been, I've had my head busted on a few of them. So we started thinking we were bull riders, so <laughs> you, know, you pick up tickets to get on it. We thought, hey, let's try this. So we started going up to Charles Winnett's place over in uh, – Right across the Denison Dam. Yeah. A place a lot of people probably started over there, and we started riding bulls, and it did take me long to figure out I didn't want to be tied to them. <laughs> so you know, I had the bulls. You just wanted to get run over. No, not so much yeah. run over, but <laughs> I remember as a kid, we had a little black pony that would chase you plumb across the pasture, and I loved that, a rush, you know, you know something yeah. chased me like that. So when I started fighting bulls up there at Charles Winters, I just kind of started messing around. Everybody goes, hey, man, you're pretty good at that. You're pretty good at that. And I thought, hey, maybe I am. But, yeah. So I started doing it, and then it just kind of came natural to me. Everybody says, man, you're just a natural at it, and it's something that I just – I just love doing, man. Yeah. So anyway, we started riding bulls. So, and then uh, uh, I started kind of doing some open rodeos. And like I said, I went to Jigs's. Yeah. There's a place there. Down the, it used to be, it's called Bev's Hideaway, Smokey's yeah. Hideaway. It used yeah. to be Bev's Hideaway. If you was anywhere in the 80s or really the 80s, may, I don't know when it burnt down. It may be in the early 90s, 80s, early 90s maybe. I think right. it burnt down. Uh, if you was anybody or whatever, you knew a Jigs, Jigs right. Hideaway. Good practice place. Yeah, you had Jig, every caliber yeah. bull you wanted to get Or Smokey's Hideaway. Smokies. It was Jigs Wade, Jigs and Bev Wade that had it down there in Thackerville. And, and it was about two or three miles from my house back right. then. I grew up there. And, and it, that's the first place I ever met uh, Glenn McIlvain and, and Bobby Del Vecchio. And, right. I mean, they, it, it was who's who, Tough and Lane and, and all them guys come down there to get on sometimes. Right. It's a good place to go practice, you know, just laid back atmosphere and get on many bulls you want to get on. You know? mm-hmm. Jerry Don Galloway brought a bunch of them down yeah. there. Yep. For sure. So uh, I started there, and then I went to bullfight school. I went to Rick Chapman's in Rose Hill, Chapman, Kansas. Yeah. I went to Skip Revolta's bullfight school. And then a guy named Stan Ham, a I dear friend him. of mine. yeah. Uh, he uh, he kind of took me under his wing at a, a little bull riding school. He was working at Mark Worthington's Ten Top Arena. So, you know, I just that's kind of how I got my start. And then I did some amateur rodeos. And then Mitt Lloyd asked me yep. to work Billy Bob's. Yeah, you know, Mitt? yeah, I remember Mitt. Rest in peace. Anyway, so he yes, asked me to come work Billy Bob's. So he comes to me. He says, "Hey, uh, Mac Altars wants to watch five bulls tonight." And I said, "Okay." Mm-hmm. Mac Altizer is so he came to Billy Bob's <laughs> and they said Mac Mark Callahan Mark Callahan is Mac I said okay so I watched him you know, he watched me fight bulls so the next after it was over he said the next weekend they, when they had that L.C. Sampson's benefit for when yeah. Charlie Sampson's son got hurt yeah so he said you want to come work that and I said yes uh, so I did so I worked that next weekend and then uh, I went to then a couple weeks later I went to a bull ride in Mineral Wells. First time I ever worked with Miles Hare. I got my patch, official bad company patch, and my little packet for the schedule and all that. Awesome. And I was fighting bulls with Miles Hare. You talk about nervous as a cat yeah. on a hot tin roof. I thought, <laughs> me and Miles Hare, but we became good friends <laughs> yeah. and fought a lot of bulls together over the years. Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty much how I got started. And then uh, Mac asked me to do everything he had. So for lots of years, I'd done everything he had. Road goes on forever and the party never ends. That's, right. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah, we had a lot of good times. Man, there was a lot of good times. And if you was in the 80s and 90s, you knew who the hell Bad Company was. Right. You knew Mac Altizer, and it was a rock and a show on dirt. And and it was really a pioneer to the, to the standalone bull ridings that we see now. I mean, Mac with the with Del Rio, the, the George, George Paul, Paul right. Memorial, and, and all that. And even, you know, I remember, it's funny you brought up Miles Hare. 
Uh, cause back we went to, uh, we'd went to San Angelo one year and, the, you know, he, Mac always had the bull riding after mm -hmm. the pro rodeo. Well, I really wasn't old enough to be in the PRCA, so I didn't get to enter the rodeo, but I, I, I slipped in, into the bull riding and I had superstition. Right. And, uh, I remember he was kind of a prick in the shoot and I mean, just a, but what you sweet. Of, yeah. And, uh. I was trying to get out of there, and Miles Hare kept coming up, calling me, "Get out of there, cocky! You got him, cocky! Come on, cocky! You got him!" And I was yeah. like, "That son of a bitch, he he knows who I am. <laughs> Everybody calls me cocky. <laughs> oh, damn, I, you know, damn Miles Hare, Miles Hare. Oh my gosh, you know, because you know, I watched all the NFRs back in the in the early '80s and stuff as a kid coming up. Miles Hare's on there, you know, and I was like, man, this guy, he 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 knows who the hell I am. And of course, superstition bucked me off at the whistle, but. Uh, I always I always remember that story is, is Miles Hare calling me cocky, right. and come to find out later on down the road, the son of a bitch calls everybody cocky. <laughs> I was like, you had that special moment. He made you feel <laughs> yeah, good for a little yeah. Bit he now. made me feel really good. Uh, made me man up and get out of there, there a little quicker. But uh, yeah, so you took off with bad company, and and uh, man, and it was wild back in them days. Yeah, and like you were saying, you know, we started off the bull ride at George Paul Memorial. I mean, when you walk under that announcer stand and they call your name and you mm -hmm. got 10,000 people screaming your name at that mm -hmm. place, it's like, wow. I don't think it's the same now as it was back then because no, of the atmosphere. Not. Because uh, not. Mac, he figured out how to get more money at him. And you get more money for the Cowboys to ride, the better the Cowboys are going to be. Yeah, and absolutely. then the better the Cowboys are, the better the crowd's going to be to yeah. come sit. So it all kind of works hand well, in hand. Well, he brought in the best bulls, too. He, he right. brought in a lot of the best bulls. I mean, he, I mean, I remember when I was entering Del Rio, entering the George Paul, the first time I went down there, I mean, I had Del Hall and then I had a David Bailey bull. And Terry and, Williams. And, and Terry too, Williams, you know? some of them. That was in kind of later years. But, uh, you know, David Bailey back then, that was when he had Gunslinger and, right. and Playboy. Playboy yeah. and, and he had, I mean, he was kind of the top stock contractor back in the day with the top end bulls, you know. And I got down there and, man, my eyes were big. I was like, right. here I am, you know, just, you know, I think I had first time I entered, it was 17, 18 years old. And right. I was like, I mean, I was kind of shell shocked at, at at all the stock that was there and the big name contractors and, and not the to mention too, man. Not and to mention Cowboys. when you walk through there, when you walk up there and you hang your rope on that fence back behind the announcer stand. There's Lane, Tough, Ty, yeah, Jim, I mean, Cody, yeah, JW. You I mean, know, you, you know, name it. There, the, the the who's who of bull right. riding was at Del Rio, and that was, I think that was really the beginning of the PBR. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I'm sure that put that was the, a put the, bull riding right. I'm sure Mac had a big influence on in, in the Del, in the Del Rio uh, George Paul Memorial had a big deal in the idea of creating the pbr because mac showed everybody how it would work and how successful it could be with bringing the rock and roll with uh you know and i love something mac always did he always named the bulls after songs yeah, a certain song right? oh man and that so, was yeah right because they became a more as famous as the song you know yeah so, and, and nowadays they just play music but it doesn't have any choreographed to what's going yeah. on I mean, everything was choreographed because I mean, you know if you're on superstition you know you can play the song yeah, superstition, superstition or, or funky you know, cole medina or right. yeah I hated that. And, damn and bull, so the, by the way. you know the the bulls kind of become as famous as the song did, you know, and um, it, it really worked well for for what he wanted to do. And yeah. then the prize money uh, today, if you know today, that's something Max started to get the prize money. There is what you got to have, and all the sponsors want to get on board. Mm -hmm. Especially now, they're riding for some ungodly mm -hmm. amount of money, and I love to see it because if you yeah, guys going to do something that dangerous, they need to be making that kind of money. Yes, yeah, sir. And so you know, um, it's that's where it all got started. At you know, people can talk. I know I was there. You know, yeah. I know how it you started. Was there. You was in from. the beginning and the start of it. And I've been up down them streets begging for money from sponsors. You know, <laughs> I've untied calves and I've fed and I've been on the feed crew. I've done everything you had to do. You know, well, that's kind of one of the, one of the things that uh, you know back in the day, stock contractors when they hired clowns, they was actually hiring fe a feed crew. No, too, no, 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 no. They did. Mac didn't. We did it because we wanted to, but. Yeah, I mean, no, Mac, you are the best. I mean, you go, there'll be Miles Hare, Leon Coffee, Jimmy Oh, Anderson, absolutely, yeah. All them guys, you know, yeah. them guys, they going to I was more cast. so talking about the amateur days and then some other right. pro rodeo contractors back in the day. Oh, they, yeah. they, they, they was, if you, you right. was part of the crew, you had to you feed, had to feed and calves, hay, and calves, water and, and untie calves during right. the rodeo. <laughs> and, well, mainly thing that I, do, I was, they, uh, I'd done a lot of the PR work, you know, go to the radio yeah, stations yeah. and the Sweden School programs with the Well, you was programs. the pretty face. Pretty face. I don't know about that. <laughs> had the funky hair. And, I mean, I always wore the visor, and 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 if anybody and go back in archives, or, or you can get some on YouTube. And I know you do a lot of Facebook stuff, putting some of your old videos and stuff on Facebook. Man, 
it, there's nobody out there that classed a bull up like you did. You had you did it with flair, with style. I mean, you'd make a pass or a step through on one, and that bull would blow by, and you'd give him the old finger or something, you know, or throw your hat at him or something, and you just make make the bull look stupid. You had more style when when bullfighting really wasn't about style. Right. It's all about confidence, you know, because if you step in there and don't, thinking you're going to get run over hooked, you're probably going to, you know. Mm-hmm. I always tell the guys these days, I mean, I, you know, Austin Ashley and Tyler Mazza, they're at my house all the time, mm-hmm. too. The greatest bullfighters going down the road right now. And I tell them guys all the time, guys, you got to believe in yourself and believe mm-hmm. in what you're doing because if you don't, it's not gonna. It's gonna work yeah. out good for you. And when I would go to them bullfights and stuff, the guys oh, Callie, hey, man, you got a mean dude draw. He took everybody. I said, good. That means I'm gonna win because I know <laughs> yeah. my ability. Yeah. If I got the best bull here, I know what I'm fixing to do with. It. I'm fixing yeah. to win this deal. And I go yeah. in there with that confidence. You can go in there all scared and nod your head. And <laughs> it, it's kind. Of, it's not a fear. Are you guys riding bulls, you know it ain't really a fear, but there's an adrenaline there that pumps oh, you. Yeah. Makes you work, so, oh yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, it's just I, I never was scared. I, I couldn't imagine getting in front of them bulls that fat, that much. I I mean. I went to Mexico one time. They had a top 25 American riders against the best Mexican riders. And we went down to Guadalajara one time. And I think I was like 14 years old when we went down there. And Joe Wimberly got us hooked up to go down uh-huh. there. And I rode down there with Dean Wilson. And we get to we get to Laredo and get on this bus. And, and uh, <laughs> it's all quiet for about six, eight hours. And we get to Saltillo or whatever. And then the, American, uh, the, the Mexican mariachi band gets on. The queen gets on. And I mean, we it, it's a it, it turns into a twenty eight hour ride down to Guadalajara, and we get down there and we ride and stuff, and we're partaking in the Mexican tequila and stuff down there. And they had a bunch of little Mexican fighting bulls out there, and I get out there and think I'm going to be somebody, and I get smoked. I mean, they were little steers, you know, little nags or whatever, or stags or whatever, and I get smoked in my bullfighting days. I was like, <laughs> I, I, I know why I ride them now. I'm not about to step in front of one of them mean suckers, but. Uh, you know, so you so you got going with, with bad company there, and you was kind of the flare flash of the show and stepping through, and and uh, you know, part of you was a big part of the show. Who old you work with? You know that that people would know. Well, that's one thing about Mac, you know, he didn't just hire one or two bullfighters. You know, uh, because while two bullfighters could be working a rodeo, you know, or working at one time, the other could be messed with a crowd. He just wants to, whatever it took to make a show. You know, absolutely. Because if you're going to sell tickets. For a show, you need to give them something to remember you by. Yeah. As like I tell the guy all the time, he says, when you leave that arena, you make sure they know what you've done. They want to come back tomorrow to buy a ticket to see something you've done mm-hmm. tomorrow night. So yeah. we always tried that. You know, expect the unexpected. There ain't no telling Absolute. what we might do. Absolutely. That's was right. That Smurf's job. Yeah. Was Sorry? that Smurf's job? What's that? When like when he got on Bad Moon drinking the beer and yeah, that's, party that's animal. Yeah. Or, or yeah, party animal. Party animal. Yeah. Yeah. Was it backwards? Bad Moon he got on backwards? No, that was party, that was animal. party animal. Yeah, I'm talking party about the animal. one he drank the beer on and rode. Yeah, party yeah, animal. He did. He did both on party animal. Yeah. Yeah. That was some wild stuff. Yeah, so I thought he did one on yeah. Bad Moon. Uh, well, maybe I don't know. And this it, guy would know. Yeah, he would. He was there. And then Smurf get on riding backwards. You know, it's like. I watched him get on it a million times. You know, he didn't have How to How the hell that. did that idea come up? Yeah. Yeah. Probably sitting around a rodeo <laughs> with a beer or two after this over. Heck, I don't know. <laughs> a beer or two. I think it's so. going to take more than that. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, we had, you know, it's a, there'll be a Miles here, you know. You can't, you can't, uh, I mean, he's, he's yeah, famous. He's, he's you know? one of the best. Uh, Leon ever. Coffee. Oh. I had to get a chance to work with J.G. Crouch. Yeah. Uh, Brother Taylor. Uh, Chad Beavers. Rowdy Barry. Uh, Eddie Hatfield. Yeah. James Pierce. I mean, there's tons of these guys, you know, that are great bullfighters, you know. And, yeah. And the contract acts, you know, and Mark Swingler and, and uh, Quail. Got to work with yeah, Quail. Yeah, Quail you know? Dobbs, yeah. Um, and we've had, we had so much fun, man. It just, it's, it just, I hate that it has to get over, you know. Yeah. Hey, we had Father Time gets on you. you Un- unfortunately, <laughs> we can't go back to them days because now it's all this woke liberal ass bullshit. Yes, and it's, 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 not in this world. We can't have that happen in this cowboy world. If we let that shit start infiltrating in, <laughs> well, I think it's already starting to leak in. But we need, we do need to put a damn stop yes, to it. Yes, sir. yeah. I we, mean, you got your weak ass bull riders looking out, checking out, and saving themselves to fight another day when. When back then, you can testify, we didn't let go. That's after your head hit the ground. Yeah. That needs to come back. We didn't let go until our head hit the ground twice. Right. And I can you vouch know? for that because I had to get y'all on hung. Uh-huh. On, just <laughs> yeah. Go your hand now. You, you've been to this trip. Let me back. tell you guys a little story about, about how, you know, I, and I knew Mark before this, and Mark knew me uh, from back in the Jigs days, and, and I was probably seven or eight years old and was going to a little MRCA or PYRA or some, some little youth deal in Ardmore at the Hardy Murphy Coliseum, and I can't remember if I was on a calf or a steer. And 
And we've talked about the shitty bullfighters in the youth rodeos, right? They're, they're, they're freaking horrible. Yeah. You know, all they are is somebody Dime out there dozen. just taking up space. Yeah. And I would got, I don't even remember how I got, I don't know if I rode the steer and you got off bad because I was horrible about getting off bad <laughs> for a long time. And hey, anyway, I was like hung me. up and dragging around the arena. I think I made two laps around the arena and the, and the other bullfighters, they're just trotting along behind like, oh, he's going to come loose in a minute. My man Mark over here walks in to Hardy Murphy Coliseum as I'm making the second lap. He steps over the fence and reaches out there and just fucking just <laughs> get, gets me loose. And I'm like, and I remember getting up and giving him a big old hug and all this. And he's still in street clothes and the whole nine yards. And I was like, damn, thanks, man. And man, I you know I was a fan before, but <laughs> there he is. And that's not the last time he saved my ass. By the way, I was always in trouble. <laughs> that's one of them deals. It's awful simple if you know how, and simply mm-hmm. awful if you don't. Yep. But a hang-up, uh, Cliff Harris, he made a quote one time. He said, I was probably the only hang-up artist, real hang-up artist that he's ever seen, you know, work a hang-up. Because them guys, when they run along beside a bull, and he's bulls jumping up and down, and you're moving yeah. them like this, you can't do nothing. You have to get up on top and get up there and get that Roll hand, hand over. And you're going the same place they're yeah. going. You know, yeah. I got tons of pictures and videos, you know, mm-hmm. where I'm up there. And, and well. it's and every situation is different, but I think you're better off if you get up top and go the same place because yep. they run along beside them. It's Opposite side of the rider. Around. If you can, yeah, sometimes you have to yep. go on the other side, but yeah, most out yep. opposite side, you know, wait for your shot to get around there. That's yep. the way we were taught, you know. Yep. And, uh, yep. and a lot of guys don't off. know that, man. Do you, do you do any schools or something, bullfighting schools, no. or you just kind of no. help tutor who who you see? Or? Uh, she does. Let them know what I know. <laughs> <laughs> teach, them every, teach them everything they know. Don't teach them everything I know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, be, it's a, it's fun, you know, to pass on some, th- you know, some knowledge and experience that you know something. If you can help somebody out, hey, I, I love it. Yeah. You know? um, did you ever make the NFR, the PBR for World Finals? Did you ever go uh, to no, them and fight? No, and I was talking to Cody about, you know, the Wrangler bullfights. Um, I could have went to those deals, you know, because I was – He I mean, should have been at the NFR multiple times. Should have right. been at the PBR finals multiple I just, times. I didn't play the politics there, as yep. my part. I, I was just thinking to say, I the politics because, played into that a lot. Right. I fought bulls because I wanted to fight bulls, and I would have done it for free if they had just because I love to do it. I didn't look for it as no business, you know, or, or nothing like that, which – I guess looking back on it, maybe I should have, but, you know, most of the guys <laughs> that were in the Wrangler bullfights, you know, I beat all them in the bullfights, you know, already. So, uh, but I just didn't like the politics, you know, they tell me I'm about to go to this town to sit there and wait. If somebody gets run over, that you can get in. I thought, well, I don't, you know, if you can hire me for what my ability, I don't even want to go, you know. So then Matt gave me that op- you know, opportunity to do something. I thought, well, to go sit at the Wrangler bullfight and wait for somebody to get run over, go with bad company. I said, I'm going to go with bad company, you know. So right. I, don't, I don't regret a minute of it, you know. Yeah. Because. Man, we've had a million dollars worth of fun. I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, you that's for Doug, I'm sure. <laughs> Probably more than that. Right. Probably, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the friends you make across the you know, country, that's friends and the memories. That'll last forever, you know? Yep. It's, Maybe yeah, they will last of forever. Yeah. It's, and it's like, it's your place. I did. Now, we used to bugle a couple years ago. <laughs> yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. <laughs> Day before my 59th birthday. <laughs> I, I, just, I just met these two boys right here, and they're having a little buck. I was like, hey, we'll go by there and check it out. Uh, Ray Ray and uh, yeah, Ray, Johnny, Johnny guys, yeah, Ray Ray and uh, great Johnny, guys. Ray, Ray, they came yeah. by there. So Cody goes, "You getting out there?" I said, "Heck no! You couldn't melt me and pour me in that pen. I ain't no way." It didn't I'm take out long, there. no, did it? <laughs> no, it <laughs> well, did not. They loaded the bull. He fought old black gold. They yep. loaded the bull. I heard them bells ring. Mm, uh-huh. Smell that snot. And that shit. <laughs> yeah. I stepped yeah. in the pen. And Cody that goes, rosin oh, no, burning. No, 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 I ain't getting in. I ain't getting in there. <laughs> Hit a couple bulls. This bull run the other in the pen. Next thing I know, my feet had me down. And Cody goes, "I told you, you, son of you couldn't stand it." Goes, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. So I went down there yeah. and made a round or so with him and got out. And it's like, whoa. Makes, makes you feel good though. Yeah, it does. Yeah, brings yeah. brings back a lot of memories and, and and feel that heart racing again. At least old River got to see him make a move or two. Yeah, yeah he was going, "Dad, yeah. what are you doing?" I said, well, I would do it today, man. Yeah. I might yeah. just go do it. Just go do it. I might just go do it. <laughs> <laughs> we can be talking about it. I mean, it don't take. He can sit here and say no all we want, oh, but uh, I guarantee we get there. I'm he, still way passionate yeah. about it. You know, I mean, I watch these guys at bullfights. You know, the bulls are a lot meaner these days than what we've. I mean, most of them, yeah, they got they got more of them that are mean. I yeah. think you know, just yeah. one or two, but. And them guys are doing some nutty stuff. I did oh, the backflips and stuff, yeah, but it wasn't the on back purpose. Backflips and the selfies with the camera and, 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 and all that <laughs> yeah. stuff, man. Who is that? Is suicidal. Yeah, you know, then their abilities, you know, their athletic ability these days, they take a lot more serious than we did. You know, we just yeah. we had we had lots of fun. Them guys are serious about did, working out and all that. Did you ever get to be around uh, crooked nose or purple uh, people just, eater? Never or, him. No, or no, them? I, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he was he was he was a bull that sure liked to play his game. Yeah, the crooked, crooked nose, nose. One yeah, of them, one of them. Harry's. Yeah, yeah, he's a he was a good one. 
Yeah. What about What's Purple that? Paper Eater? Wasn't he the black? He was a Mexican, wasn't he? Uh, I don't remember. He was mean. Mean. I mean, of course, they was all damn wasn't mean. He the Devil Horn Bull. I can't remember. I, I thought he was a kind Looked of like Mexican a bull that, that was out there and just eat your old lunch. Yeah, I think it was a Mexican. Yeah, yeah, yeah one forty-one. He has some big horns on him too. Right? Yeah, he's, he's in one, one of those books. Yeah, he yep. is. Yeah, but uh, I mean, the the fighting bulls they're fighting these days, man, they're crazy. Them bulls. Yeah. Well, what's the top yeah. fighting bull out now? I know you. I know you do a lot of judging bull judging the bull uh, fights and stuff. I don't know. Troy Bradshaw's got some bad cats. Yeah, uh, that peekaboo. That's a hell of a name for a fighting bull. Yeah, yeah best peek a best <laughs> man. You don't want to play peekaboo with him. Hey, it's a red bull, and you nod your head. You better be serious. Yeah. When you said his name was Peekaboo, it reminded me of the picture of Smurf on the Wrangler deal where he's hiding behind the barrel, and that bull's peeking around the side. And he's looking. Yeah. That, that, when you said Peekaboo, that's what it reminded that's me of, that picture. Is. And, and I that's think a big Smurf red bull, ain't like he? This. Peekaboo, is he big red, red bull? Red bull with big old turned out horns? Yeah. That's on a mission. Yeah, I think they had him at Sykes in this yeah, past yeah, weekend. Yeah, Pessimo had him one around at, at, at the Sykes. Yep. And then the red one, uh, I forgot his name, the red bull right there, and then the one horn bull was good too. Of course, all of them, I mean. Yeah. Troy's got a stack. Uh, he, he's got stacked fighting bulls. And then uh, – I'm yeah. glad to see fighting bulls come back, right? Because used to at the Wrangler NFR, after the bull riding, they had the Wrangler bull fights. And I always like yeah. watching that. I remember back when Rex Dunn got smoked and and laid out and, and all that. I mean, I, I like that side of it. I, I, I think that adds another – I mean – if you can top bull riding, I think bullfighting would be right. the and next. Those, we fought different kind of bulls in the man. We fought a few Mexicans, but when you fight with a big crossbreds, his yeah. stride, he's going to get seven yeah. or eight yards in one stride, and you got to allow for that. <laughs> yeah. I, I was going to ask you, you know, because back in the day, right, back in the old days, it was it from and, – and correct me if I'm wrong, because uh, Lord knows I've never been a damn bullfighter, but I've been around a bunch <laughs> of them. Back then – the the in the ring you didn't want to fight a mexican you wanted to fight the american bull and then but now it's more the other way where they uh, no, want to I, fight I the mexicans and not the americans i'd rather fight a mexican because you know he's going to come on us you Stay know come tight. hard right there. yeah and when he hits you it ain't gonna hurt quite as bad as them big ones when they come at you i mean there's you've been hit by them <laughs> yeah. being run over by an s10 truck or a yeah. max truck i mean yeah you poison but yeah um uh, but you just got to fight them a little different you know uh, and the guys can handle the big bulls or, or sure enough. Well, you seem like you got more step throughs and, and walk. You know, you, you're staying in a tighter circle here. You're not running or you like a like seems like an American bull. You've got to sometimes they'll, they'll come hit you or come get with you and stay tight for a round or two. And then they're going to leave out right. where a Mexican would stay with you. And, and you don't have to make as many big steps or you don't have to chase him around the arena and pick him back up or get him to come right, back to right, you. Right, right, No, um, they're pretty much going to stay with you. Yeah. You know, if he's good. And plus, you know, sometimes you got to push him. You know, if you're going to win a bullfight anyway, you need to be pushing him. Yep. You know, you don't need to be – you know, I see a lot of the guys these days, you know, let the bull run to the corner. They're kind of walking over here. Now, I'm going to catch him right when he comes out of that corner. I'm, first thing mm -hmm. I do, he turns the corner, I'm going to be right there. That's what yeah. I want him to see, right there. Yeah. You know, and make what you, you know, do what you want. Make him wonder what you're doing instead of him exactly. wondering what yeah. the hell – and, and, and them guys, if, I mean, they understand. They can put that bull anywhere. Because when you throw a fake and he goes over there, that you're controlling him. Yeah. I mean, you can put him anywhere mm -hmm. you want him. So put him where you want him. Yeah. You know, if you want him to go to left or left, you step around him. But the guys that start getting pushed out, when you start getting pushed out in the big circle, you're going to get caught because he's got yeah. four feet and he's going to catch you. Yep. So you you just can't just keep running the big circle. Yeah. Uh, and then some <laughs> guys will do a step through and then back up four or five steps. And I mean, yeah. I always like to stay right there because you can't get that big run at you, you know. Yeah. Everybody's got a different style, you know. Get off the tracks when the train's coming through. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Personally, I just stay on the back of the bucket. Because I mean, really, yeah. with them big American bulls coming at you, I mean, that's like a freight train. You better get your ass off the tracks because he's yeah. coming. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a different deal. Yeah, but you got to deal with them all. So, back to some of the some of the stories, some of the wild bad company stories. What, what's oh, one of your favorite shit. stories with bad company, man? Because I know y'all was the rock in the show, the party in the show. I mean, it was that was it was always a highlight when, even when I was pro rodeoing a little bit, which I didn't do a whole lot, but that was back when the PBR and the PRC had to piss and match. But uh, and they made me choose, and I went to I tried PRCA for a year, but and went PBR. But uh, well, I did when I did go to pro rodeos. I entered. I tried to enter every one of damn max because right. that was. I mean, that was a highlight rodeo. I mean, you knew it was going to be, it was going to be fun. I always tried to enter it on Saturday because that's when the you know. 
Yeah, it's going to be fun. And, yeah. and also, he took care of the Cowboys, too. You he know, did. We, we incorporated the Cowboy Camp. You know, which what that mm-hmm. is, is they'd always have a place for the Cowboys to come and eat. If they're coming in from rodeo that day and, you know, mm-hmm. get to the rodeo grounds a little early, they'd have a place to come sit down and eat. They wouldn't have to worry about going to town, finding something yep. to eat. You know, them and the families could yep. sit down and eat. And then after the stove, you could have a beer, you know, and get on your yeah. bed or whatever. And we've had a lot of guitar pickings around uh-huh. uh, camp front. I tell you what, a guy right now that's pretty popular, <laughs> he started the bad company. He used to work for us, feed cattle, and sit on the bell hand play with us. Um, He's come to our room, spent the night, he's stepped in the back of his truck. We've let him use our showers, and that's Ryan Bingham. That I'll be damned. I mean, right there, he started with Bad Company. And he yeah, I heard down. that. Uh, he said, and we had a lot of good times, man, sitting yeah. around playing with him. Yeah. And then, you know, just uh, that that's one thing Mac did. He was take care of the Cowboys and, and, and the breakaway rope. And you see all the girls these days. Mac is the first one that started. Really? Uh, incorporated breakaway rope in some of the rodeos. Mm-hmm. I'll be damned. And now you see them girls are making some money, and they can't rope. Them girls are talented. Ooh, I don't see. I don't see why yeah. the calf ropers don't take one swing and throw it like them girls do, because them girls catching one swing. You know, you ain't a kidding. Yep. I've always wanted yeah. that. Yeah. So <laughs> that's a good question. I, I don't know. Right. I mean, yeah, because you see a calf roper track him down there. You know, he'll take two or three more swings and then right. put it on him where these where these girls are. I mean, just whoop whoop and done. You know, I mean, two swings and it's on. Before we yeah. go to any more stories, let's hear from our great sponsors. Hey, for all your logistical needs, give Sutherland Logistics a call. And yeah, there's we got there's all kinds of crazy stories. Some of them I don't need, I can't tell. Well, as long as it don't get you in too much trouble with the wife, we're wide open, man. Oh, she ain't no problem. Hell <laughs> <laughs> away! <laughs> yeah, come on. Uh, I guess one about it, another another funny one was in a was in Adel, Georgia. And we'd have to go to different. We went to Valdosta and a couple of little uh, towns there around Georgia, and I'd done some radio interviews and went to the Cotton Patch. It's kind of like a Chili's here, but it's called Cotton Patch down there. And we was doing an interview, and I went and picked Troy and Owen Dunn up from oh, the airport. Oh boy! So they were there with us, you know, yeah, Troy. Yeah. And so uh, they were there with us, you know. We was kind of doing the deal because we was on the way back to the uh, back to the town. To Val- we're going back to Adel after we've been to Valdosta. So anyway. Um, so this lady, her name is uh, Ruthie Garner. She's passed away now. Got rest her soul. But she was uh, me and her didn't get along at all. We hit it off right at the beginning of the week. You know, she was kind of arrogant, and I didn't want to take none of her trash. So anyway, so we was at this cotton patch and we was doing these interviews. First break, she said, we got four breaks within an hour. You know, every fifteen yeah. minutes we get a break in there. So, so the first uh, break comes on. She asks Troy. She goes, you know, how many kangaroos are in Australia? And I'm going, my job is there to promote the rodeo. Yeah. He goes, oh man, there's quite a few. She goes, is it hot in Australia? Yeah, it's pretty hot. I'm going. What does this have to do with the rodeo? You know, no so kidding, I let that yeah. blow. You know, well, we got a couple more breaks. You know, we'll catch it. So I just say that to her. So rock along there. We sign a few more autographs. You know, we're in front people come in and out of this restaurant. And second break, she catches somebody coming out. She goes, "Hey, what did y'all have to eat in there?" You know, they told her what to eat. She goes, "Was the food good and all that?" And she goes, "Y'all come to Cotton Patch." I'm going and get an autograph for the clowns. You know, and she, and she just saying that. You know, like, okay. So after we went to, after we went to break, uh, the break went off. I said, "Ma'am, I said you didn't say anything about the rodeo." You know, I said, "You know, I want to uh, you know promote the rodeo." You mm. know, so that's what I'm here for. She goes, "I don't know how to do my job." I said, "I don't know how to do mine. It's to promote this rodeo." So far, you ain't said nothing about the rodeo. So we just didn't get along. We you know right. like oil and water. We didn't <laughs> so anyway, that was like in midweek, and then on Thursday, every Thursday at noon, she had a live show. It's called on the front porch, or something for wherever she's at. You know what town she's yeah. in, whatever. So it was. I mean, Roger Mooney. Was there was a rodeo announcer? Mac was on there. Uh, somebody, somebody else, and it was me because I was I was the last one. It was four. I was going to do an interview on the porch that day. So they interviewed uh, viewed Roger, his silver tongue. You know, if y'all know who Roger mm-hmm. Mooney is, he's yep. a great announcer. He he said his you know little beef and everything, and he went to whoever it was, and then Mac got up and said his piece, and then I uh, heard the tech over. He goes, "Y'all got one minute." I, she goes, "Oh, I thought thanks, save that for me." I thought she done it on purpose. I know because yeah. she wouldn't give me no chance to say anything. So she goes, well, Mark, I hear you had a, just had a new baby. She goes, can you tell us about that? She, I'll tell you about it. <laughs> I said, oh, yeah. She goes, well, was he healthy? I think I said, yes, wife's okay. He's okay. I said, his name is Reese McCain Callahan. Uh, he weighs seven pounds, 11 ounces. I said, he's 21 inches long. He's got a pecker about that long. <laughs> I said, I said that on live TV. She went, her mouth dropped her. She didn't know what to say. And then when I took my mic off, boom, dropped it, and away I went. I'm like, she didn't know what to say. And Roger Mooney and Mac Altiz was out there rolling, boy. Man, was, ask Roger Mooney if y'all see him. He'll tell you the truth. Anybody y'all ask me. Uh, yeah. and he's got a pecker about that long. She didn't say that. And poor Reese lived up to it. I don't know. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, I'm <laughs> done all the diaper change. <laughs> uh, she she got what she deserved, I think, that day. But, wow. Uh, that's yes. funny stuff. Is it like, I guess what they call that karma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, just jumped right up there and bit her right now. Oh, man. <laughs> the, the, the reaction of Roger Moon, you know, was that. It was crazy. So you fought, Bill, fought Bulls for how long? 25, how long? 25 years. 25 years. 25. Yeah. Pretty rough down through them roads, I'm sure. Some injuries. What was some of them? Oh, I've had five broken legs, sternum broke, tailbone twice, arm, ribs, fingers, three knee surgeries. Mm. Uh, I got a steel rod in my leg right now, three or four back surgeries, a couple injections. Just having his hip injected last week. So sounds like a ball of fun. Why would anybody want to do that? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's really it, it really kind of crazy the the concept of it all is because you know there's a bull in the shoot and you know 100 percent you tell him let him out he's going to run over you mm -hmm. no doubt in your mind you're going to get run over and you yeah. tell him to let him out anyways. Now did you get hurt more uh, on the on the fighting bull side or was it more of the protection side that you was getting hurt? Which, which I mean I, I don't even know if you ever thought about it but um, I'm going to ask you. <laughs> The the worst broken leg I had was at El Reno, Oklahoma. Um, I went to a work a rodeo up there, and a bull was trotting down the arena. I just kicked him in the butt, being stupid. Well, he kicked, and when I kicked, the reflexes, you know, the, the reflex from me kicking him, yeah. snapped my leg in two right there. I just mostly mm, I think I remember, I remember that. Yeah, uh, and uh, uh, so that was one of them. Just the knee injuries, you know. Usually, is that the rodeo, the, the little bull riding or whatever Capart put on every year, or there for a few years? Because um, he always had one in El Reno. He had a big bull ride and a junior bull riding every year Larry, up there. I don't know if Larry, I don't, I don't know why I was there, but I was fighting bulls. I don't remember who hired me. It was too long ago. <laughs> too many damn moons yeah. ago. Um, but anyway, that was, uh, that was you know, just doing stupid stuff. And then as far as saving cowboys, you have to stay there a lot longer. You know, if you step in there, you got to yeah. take the hit. Yeah. That, that'll get your knee injuries, you know, and stuff like that. And then uh, I tried to jump up. Maybe we was at a bull sale at Texas County. No, it was a decab, Texas, back decab, in the day. Yeah, we I remember to, decab. We used to go to the bull sales. You know, they they buck 150 bulls oh, a day. And yeah. All the guys get them trying to sell these bulls, you know, like that. And Well, and y'all was also there trying to get right. kind of gigs to, you know, to fill in the gaps on, on weekends you didn't have something already booked. Right. Yeah, that's right. And then uh, that was when I was, I mean, I was I was loving it. Man. I was fighting every bull that would come out. I was, like I said, I wasn't really scared of much. And. This big, I mean, this big Brent will come out. He run everybody out of the pen. A big high horn Brent. I already jumped 12 bulls this day, 12 bulls. Everybody knew I could jump bulls, you know, heads up or whatever. So <laughs> yeah. This bull run everybody out. I thought, this dude ain't scaring me. So I jump back over the fence, and I would go to him. He sees me. Here he comes. Well, I jump, and he picks his head up. When he does, he just catches my toe and spins it around and snaps my ankle. Ooh. I thought, wow. So I got to hobble to the fence. And I think he ended up poking a horse, too. I remember. I think Sammy Andrews had a, a, a paint horse there. He stuck him right in the back of the hot. Yeah. No bad deal. It's, wow. The bull's kind of like that black one y'all was talking about that y'all got. It's, yeah. He's going he's gonna to hook his own shadow. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm pretty sure that bull is the son of Satan. <laughs> yeah. I, I promise you that, that son of a gun is, <laughs> he eats fire and, and shits lava. Right. I promise you, he is, he is pissed <laughs> off mean. Do you remember what he's out of? Because he was asking me a while ago. <sighs> yeah, what is what he out of? Out of control, what are you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's out yeah. of control. <laughs> Uh, and I remember at the state high school, Texas State High School finals, I worked them like six, seven years in a row. Well, I, I went through there and made a move to save a cowboy. And I was looking back at it. I remember the bull was touching my hand. The guy opens the out gate. Well, I run into the end of the out gate. And the bull hits <clears throat> me and breaks my sternum. Yeah. Oh, I so. broke my sternum before, too. It ain't, that ain't no fun. It's hard to wipe your ass. It's hard to do anything <laughs> oh. with a broken sternum. And then on top of that, I, not only did I break my sternum, but both collarbones at the same oh, time. Man. I know what but a funny, funny, about. funny story about that, though, is I did that in Laughlin and then. And then uh, three weeks later, I sensed the world title in Columbus, Ohio. And, yeah. But now you've got guys that's out with a single collarbone injury. They're out six fucking months. They don't make them like they used to. Yeah. I broke both collarbones and my sternum and then come back three weeks later to sense the world title. <laughs> From Ty Murray, I might add. What's, what's, one, of the, <laughs> what's one of the worst uh, wrecks or hangups you had to work in cowboy protection? Do you remember? And where? Like a hang up that really stands out to you or P eleven, a plumber. So everybody knows that he's, he's a little brain type boy. You hang up to him, he's he's gonna hook the everybody in the what stands. Was he? P eleven, a plumbers. His little chocolate. Charlie Plumbers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you know who Plumber is, you know oh, all them. Oh, oh yeah. All um, them little souped up spots, little crossbred, inbred, little 
Yeah, back mean. then they was getting where they was real mean ass rats on acid. <laughs> That's a pretty good way to describe it. But he was that dude there. He was crazy. Oh, yeah. um, I don't know, just you know, and I I loved working hangups. I was all crazy, hang up, hang up, you know, because I I'd like to go do it, you know. It's, right. Yeah. Because when you jump on top of this bull, and you got all these people watching you, and you see you get this cowboy off, he lands safely, and you step off. There's not a drug you could take, legal or illegal, that's going to make you feel like you do when yeah, you step down absolutely. off. Yeah, right. it's, it's the rush yeah. about it, you know. It's, and there's there's no feeling of, I mean, in, to to get across to these guys, it's like when you're ninety. And you step off that on feeling your feet. there I, I on mean, your feet. Is, there is right. not when you. Just, There's nothing better. I mean, when you snap a bad cat away from your hand and whistle rings, and you step off, there is no bigger feeling. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sitting here talking about, it and I get cold yeah, chills. Get me too. <laughs> Hair yeah. standing up on the back of my neck, just thinking about it, and that that's you don't get that feeling. There ain't a drug out there. Oh. Adrenaline is by far the the, oh, yeah. the, the best, and yeah. And yeah, no, bull riders get through it one or two times a night. You know, we got fit to deal with now. So that's see, that's it's why like, I never oh. fought bulls because I was always fucking scared of them. <laughs> I, I had to worry about one or two bulls a night. You know, I'd have to get on one or two bulls. I just had to worry about them. You crazy some bitches had to get in front of forty five or fifty Every a night. Every single one of them. I remember working the bull riders of that many by myself. You know, back in the yeah. day, amateur wow. days. You know, forty five wow. bulls a night by yourself. You know, nobody help you. Not even a barrel. Yeah. You just like, wow, just have some more. You know, yeah. People people say, dang. You know, people say you know bull riders are fucking crazy, but. In all honesty, it's the bullfighters bull that are. Yeah, which is crazy. You know, I mean, you don't get hurt them. riding bulls. You get hurt getting off of them. Yeah. Well, you're in front yeah. of them. Yeah. Yeah, but I can choose where I go too. You know, you're you're tied to them. And I, I, True. I, one of the main reasons <laughs> I quit is because we was at Texoma Riding Stables one year. I remember uh, Noel Krausen had the deal, and I hung up to this Bramer, Gray Bramer. I thought I was a bull rider, and I was on the between him and the fence, and he dragged me plumbing around that arena, and I was watching everyone in the post come back. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever get loose, I'll never fight bulls or never ride bulls again. And I did, and I said, "Heck with that." Yeah. <laughs> I counted every post as they went by because it, it was V wire, and he. Was no uh, yeah, yeah, well, the boys I've thought they was going to be a bullfighter one day, and we had a mean little, that mean little me. Mexican fight. Not, it was not Mexican fight, but lean, mean little mini bull, little muley. Yeah, yeah a little muley. I mean, just mean and, and shit. And uh, Briar thought he was going to step out there and be a bullfighter. I, I made the moves said, in my mind, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna said, be real get out cool. there and get you some. And he, he he fucking froze up, and this one piled him up. Rolled <laughs> I was him up yeah, moving really really fast in my mind, and the bull was small enough. I it I knew it didn't hurt him much, but I had I just, I'm sorry I just laughed <laughs> I had to laugh at him. I said, "How's that how's that bullfighting working out for you?" I ain't no good. I ain't doing. I no never more. did it. I ain't done it, <laughs> never since done it then. Since. And that was like four or five years ago. That's a wise man. Yeah, yeah. Wise you bullfighters, man. y'all were y'all. You, you know they say bull riders are crazy, but I I, I got to say them bullfighters was just a little bit on the they're a little crazy. Yeah, cut from a different cloth. You ain't shit. <laughs> yeah. Huh? You ain't shit. So who was speaking of different cloths and who in your mind? Because I've got I've got I've got my top five bullfighters. I thought cowboy saving wise. Can you give me a top five, or will you give a top Mark five? Callahan? Because I don't want you to no. piss anybody off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, these days, you can uh, all time, all talent, all time, and probably Cody Webster. Tell you, I'm out. Dusty, Dusty's there equal with him. About that, Cody Webster is one phenomenal. Yeah, you just can't beat him. He's bad. Kid ass. never makes a wrong step. He's there every time. And I was telling him today, situational uh, anticipation. Yeah, you got to know where to be at the right time, yeah. and you won't see him in the in the screen. All of a sudden, he's there right on time. Yeah. that's what it takes. You got to well, know when to got, go. You got to read bulls. Right. You got to know bull riding and be able to read them to to see what's fixing to come, so you know where to be and how to be. Right, and you got yeah. You got because you and you can a bull rider's going to tell you two or three jumps before he gets bucked off where he's going to land or not. Yeah, you know, and Miles said it good, you know, about days you got to anticipate where they're going to live, you know, land and and get yourself there because if he's going to get thrown over there, you don't need to be over here, you better get yourself over there because you can yeah. see the way he's getting strung out or whatever. Yeah, but Cody Webster, I mean, he the stuff he does is phenomenal. Yeah, he seems to always know where the crash site's going to be, <laughs> scene of the crash yeah. is at, and he's always right there. Yeah, he's usually and, you know, in the mix, you know, and Dusty, they, they call Dusty the goat, and he's earned that well, you know, them guys is. Yeah, I think there's the a pretty good crop of bullfighters coming up. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, 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 they just just in Austin Ashley, you know, them guys, they're, they're cowboy saving dudes too, you know. And, uh, 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 gosh, what's the, Nathan Harp. Nathan Harp. Yeah, oh, yeah, you know, good, they, yeah. You know, any of them guys that'll step in there and let that bull hit them so the yeah. cowboy can get up one way? Yeah. They're their hair erosion, man. You know, I, I couldn't step in there to begin with. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I damn sure ain't gonna stay around there to sign the ticket. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you know, there were some great guys, you know, back in the day. But the the, the talent these days, I don't know if it's because there's a lot more rodeos, you know. A what lot do more you exposure. think that the the rejuvenation of of the of the Wrangler bullfight or the bullfights, the BFOs, and all that stuff? Do you think that's drawed more in and, and, and is helping bring more good bullfighters to the scene oh yeah yeah there's man there's some guys that some young guys coming up right now that'll blow your mind yeah, because there for a while bullfighting was just kind of almost dead you know right it was, yeah it, 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 did, it, it almost did. just fell off the it did fall off yeah then and it then, came back and, and i'm glad to see it coming back oh yeah I, i've always been a fan of that but now now i don't i don't know how i the attendance, the people that's coming to watch it, I, I could make that happen a lot better because we used to sell tickets. You know, we had to pack yeah. our coliseum. I don't know what their marketing deal is, but you know, maybe they don't have to market. But you can fight bulls a lot better, ride bulls a lot better if you got a bunch of people watching you than two or three people sitting in the stands. You know, just yeah, blows my mind the concept of you know what. Well, I, the atmosphere it's, it's it's a lot like when they you know when when you'd go to a regular tour stop on the, on the PBR tour, you'd go to Duluth, Georgia, or compare that to. Tough Hedeman's deal in Fort Worth, or or the fi- or even the finals in Vegas. Yeah, I like mean, the pit, wow, the atmosphere is just different. Yeah. That deal Tom Murray puts on out there in the pit. Yeah, I mean, you've yeah, been there. I mean, they, yeah. they're right there. I ain't never been. Oh there, yeah, in the pit, it. man, they get loud and it's it's crazy in there. And you think that adrenaline don't run through your brains? You're crazy, man. Oh, That's yeah. what the it's louder about. the crowd, the better the atmosphere. Right. The more adrenaline you get, and I mean, it Everything just it drives you. And, and the bulls feel it too. I guarantee you the bulls feed off yeah, that because they, yeah. they buck like some buck out there in the pit. Yeah, people don't give them credit for how smart as animals they are. It's you a little are too, kidding. But it's smart. Yep. That's for sure. This episode of Beyond the Buckles is brought to you by our friends at Loric Ranch Home Furnishings, Young Cattle Company, Sutherland Logistics, Off Our Rocker, Sunnyside Graphic Design, Cactus Rodeo, Print and Stitch Company, DEL Cattle Company, and Blake Skaggs Bucking Bulls. But so, yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Them guys, uh, they're, they're fun to watch. Yeah. So you think Webster's probably the top, top dog? Him and Dusty. I'm, uh, yeah. yeah. You really, I can't. They're by far probably the best. Oh, best team. Two ever. Best, best two duo. Ever. Uh, there's yeah. never been anybody. I don't think there ever will be anybody. As good yeah. as two. And I'll put my name on that. Yeah. And I've fought bulls for a long time. I fought bulls with a lot of guys. I fought bulls with Rob, Miles, Rick, and I mean all the guys. You did know. you ever fight with a guy by the name of Greg Crabtree? No, I never did. He was a little bit after. Yeah. Uh, no, he, we fought bulls to uh, not not together, but he was coming at the same time yeah. until something. You know, well, he, was, he, was, he stayed uh, more over Jerry Nelson's side. And, um, but yeah, he was he was very him. Angry. Him and Frank were were the probably yeah, Frank. The, I mean, the, Frank. I mean, bad Frank. You can't say enough about him. But them two guys right there was would definitely be in my in in my top five, if not top two. And I don't know which one because both of them saved my ass more than <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, ah, you can't man. Yeah, you just can't. I mean, you, every time, like I say, you mention somebody else, it's like, wow, yeah, he's like, yeah, that too. yeah. You know, there's a lot of. Well, I mean, then you got, I mean, yeah, we can go back to the older guy. What about Wick Path? He was badass. He's kind of started the classy, the flashy show of stuff way back in the day. And Rex Dunn, yeah. Rex Dunn. I mean, yeah, them guys is all legends, man. And they, yeah, it's just like, bro, it, it's changed thing, so much these days from what it was back then. Yeah. So back then. They were, you know, they were on, you know, yeah. way up here. And now they, now that it's evolved, and the guys are taking it more serious. The talent the guys got these days is better by far than some of the guys back them days. Sure, because you know, they're not doing the moves, you know, step through, reverse, and all that. You know, that that's yeah, they're shining. You know, they yeah. do some back fakes and back clips and stuff. It's like wow. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where, I don't know who the crazy ass some bucket was. Was it Andy Burrell that that started the backflip stuff? I don't, I don't dust your him. We one of them two. And Sam Grass did some stuff like that. I mean, holy shit. Them guys were. Yeah, I got to fight bulls, man. I hit that. You ain't shit. a kidding. He, he's handy, handy. Yeah. Very yeah. handy. Yeah. They, I mean, we could go on and on about great bullfighters. I mean, Miles yep. Hare. Uh, and, you know, and JG was for JG Crouch. He was so oh, much fun yeah. to be around. You know, he'd do the comedy and his stuff. And the stuff. And Mark Swingler, I tell you what, me and him have had so much fun. We get out there and get. You know, you, you get tickled and you get off script and everything, but there's so many memories, you know, just some, but not sticking to the script. You know, like I say, J.G. and Mark Swingler and Brother Taylor, and he was he was. Did you ever guys. did you ever do anything with Lisa Harris? Uh, yes, I worked Bonifay, Florida, with yep. him and Matt. That guy's a character, man. I remember him. Whoop that ball down there! Yeah. Whoop that ball down there, there, man. I remember that going to Harper Morgan Rodeo, so right. a lot of Harper stuff, and he always cracked me up, man. And then, uh, you know, I worked with Rick Young and Rudy. You know, all yeah, those guys, yep. man. There's so much fun there. You know, they all have their different. 
quirks about them, you know, and their different styles. But everything, you know, is, is yeah. the, like I say, the memories and everything. Matter of fact, I'll get to see Rudy and Denton. Who's the best weekend. bullfighter you ever worked with? I'm putting you on the spot. Oh, man. I was. <laughs> Me and Rowdy Berry work good together. I mean, yeah. as far as we work good, and Chad yeah, Beavers is a hand. He fought the NFR, too, didn't he? Mm-hmm. I think, I think yep. he was the NFR. Chad Beavers is a good bullfighter. You know, we work good as a team. Smurf. I yeah. Mean, Smurf, he's that yeah. legend. What, what could <laughs> Smurf, Smurf is such do. a good guy. I love that kid, man. I'll tell you what. He was. He Smurf, pulled a lot of shit out of there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean. We, we'd re- think of crazy stuff. Like, we was in Lovington, New Mexico one year. We're sitting there. Hey, let's go over to the to the show barn to get us some scoops because it just started raining. I mean, it rained. There was about that much slick mud on top yeah. of it. Yeah. So we go over here. We get these big old grain scoops, and we tie them to the pickup horse, Pete yeah. Fox, and I think Macario. Somebody might have been in a pickup man. So this guy named Sagebrush, he was always there. He got his big old high-dollar Colombian cigars. Boy, some Smurf was smoking on his cigar. <laughs> we made a couple laps around there. We go out behind the road. You read, I'm over throwing up. Because that cigar, cigar, <laughs> Smurf comes inside me. He starts throwing up. We're both throwing up. Big grown bullfighters, macho bullfighters, throwing our guts up because he's got that cigar smoke and mud all over her face. You know, just stuff like that, you know, is a, is a blast, you know. And just memories yeah. like that. And Wow. It's <laughs> it's been a, it's been a ride. I, I've had a lot of stuff. That, if you sit down and think about it and write it down, you could write a book that would be blow people's minds. Oh man, we we got to stop. We 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 need to write a book for sure. I mean, with 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 the, all the Mac and the bad company getting it all started and and going. I mean, we could like I said, we could sit here for days and just talk about great bullfights and stuff. And I and I want to get Mac on at some point and get you back right. in here and 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 get the get the get the behind the scenes, the true story of kind of. How it, how he wound up getting Del Rio and and, right. and and get back into some of the dirt and the grit of some of that, but uh, yeah, we had a good team though. I mean, you know, everything from the girls in the bad word booth, you know, our secretaries, uh, mm-hmm. uh, the guys that feed, you know, feed crew and stuff. Everybody knew their part, knew their job. You how know, much is company. bad company merchandise worth nowadays? Now oh, that they ain't around no more. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's collectors yeah. out. When you like, when you said when you went and got your first packet, I wonder what that packet be worth today. I don't know. It was a big bad company patch. Yeah, uh, and I think a small one had my schedule stuff in it. I thought, yeah. wow, I'm patched in. I, I've had the tried. big time now, boys. You know, it was a blessing. I was, you know, yeah. and me and Mac just worked good together. You know, he. And, I it, think Mac would have been really good to work for and work with. Yeah, I he mean, uh, he paid good. You know, and and he took care, like you said, he took care of the riders, not just with uh, with with the, the the food and stuff coming in early and stuff, but I do know a few guys and. And uh, that he helped out, you know, to get to the next one. He'd oh yeah, hey, four or five hundred dollars, or a hundred dollars, or whatever, just to get on down the road to the next one. And Mac Altiz would give you the shirt off his back and borrow kidding. one from somebody yep. else if you needed it. Yep. Just the way he is, that's you know? for sure. And and I've seen him do so much for so many people, you know. And it, yeah, Mac Mac's true. Yeah, he does a true blessing to the sport and brought a lot to it. But shoot, I think I think you're pretty awesome yourself. I mean, well, I think you. you I think yeah. you uh, yeah. kind of recreated and put a lot of style in the bullfight, and you helped create Bad Company and make Bad Company what it was well, because you can't think of Bad Company without Mark Callahan, Mark Callahan yeah. out there in the in the topless hat or the visor out there just stepping through one and giving him the old bird when he goes by <laughs> or doing something or playing to the crowd, you know, all sticking his chest out. You know, I mean, I, I watch all your videos, man. Of course, I was a fan then. I'm a fan now. Yeah, River was watching one. One night was at Del Rio, and Leon defaulted it, and I think Miles and Rowdy made a pound. I just ran in there, gave him by the horn, and tipped me out, looking at the crowd. River goes, Dad, you're not even looking at him. I said, I don't have to look at him. I know where he's at. He's right here because I got a hold of him. You know, you yeah. look at you know, just stuff like that. I mean, that, that's just know? style. That's showmanship. <laughs> yeah. And that's what yeah, that's, it is. It, when I think of Mark fighting bulls, he was just straight up a showman and – and flashy. And Roy Doyle, yeah. he asked me to post it. It's the jam. I, thought, I don't know if it's a snore or radio jam, somewhere. Yeah. Where the old Brennan with the down, the down horn. horn. Yeah. Somebody's riding him. He runs through, he throws his cowboy down. He's fishing to get hooked. And I step in and make the move. And I just take my hat off the crap that quick, you know. Yeah. Like, Whoa. You don't ever see Yeah, a lot of people would call that showing off. Or, you know, yeah, being, I was. Being cocky mm. or showing off. But if you don't have that I'm mentality. I'm paid to put on the show. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. The crowd know? liked it. Like Nate Diaz and Conor McGregor, they paid to put on a show. Yeah, I'm gonna put on, on a show. show. <laughs> right. sure you did. Uh, but you know, and and that's what I tell the guys these days: just go out there and show off. You know, and don't worry because you're fighting this head up here. You're not gonna fight your bull. You, you gotta yeah. get that mind right. Yeah. You know, and you you can't be sitting there scared to death when you're fixing a call for him. You better be thinking of something happy. You know, get yeah. in a happy place when you're not for him. And it's well, I man, I, I think you had a that an awesome career. I was yeah. glad to be around a lot of it. 
and and see a bunch of it firsthand. I know these guys here wish they could go back and, and see some of that. Yeah, and, and be nice. in that time. Yeah, as well you as know. you too. It was fun to watch you and JW grow up, you know, and, and your dad and my mom there, you know, watching, you know, bull riding every week for I don't know how long, you know. <laughs> we could go bull rides and then yeah. watch you guys be successful. It's really, you know, it made yeah. me proud too because yeah. we all came from the same place, you know, and, and yeah. your sister, she's still a big part, a big fan. You oh, know, she yeah. all, you know, she loved them to death. So uh, it's, it's, it's good that the families and the friends you make, you know, they, they'll. They last forever. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, uh, it's, it's been a blast but man i hate that i hate i hate because I, I could go on and talk i hate to call it but man we were kind of kind of about out of time and no problem i've got to get you back on man we, we got too yeah, many stories do. to talk about and and, mm -hmm. and and too many good times to to tell so mark man it's been a pleasure bud Thanks, and man. uh guys hey, hey, you keep on these two guys here you make pros out of them too guys <laughs> they, they they got they're they going yeah. they're in the right direction yes, anyway i was telling my wife on the way in here i said that you watch she's been only the two the guys besides mine that say yes sir and those are yes man. <laughs> <laughs> well they better they get a boot in that that's ass. right <laughs> same way i am or a hot shot <laughs> and if, <laughs> yeah if more of the parents these days would do that they wouldn't be the world would be in the shape <laughs> these days. Right. so guys if y'all like what y'all said and y'all don't want my boot in your ass go like <laughs> us go follow us <laughs> <laughs> subscribe to us I um, promise you it don't feel good. Yeah, leave us a comment, no. and uh, and we'll get back to you some of your questions and stuff. Give us your feedback. If you don't like us, give us give us the bird, flip us off, tell us we ain't no good, or or give us a high five or whatever. But go like us, follow us. We're on all major podcast platforms, and uh, look us on Facebook and Instagram. Till next time, Tight, pet raws and hot. paint forever. That's it. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>